So no, I'm not dead, although I pretty much can't remember the last time I went for a full month or so without making a video. So what could have possibly precipitated such a change? Have, have they found out where I live? Did, did someone take offense to all those videos that I made about uranium? Or did I find true love? Or was it just a, a glitch in the matrix? Well, I've been adventuring on some of the most beautiful and deadly stuff that I've ever worked with. That there is not a water solution. That's liquid ammonia, which is something that you more might expect to find on Uranus or Neptune, but not on Earth. And dissolved in it is metallic lithium, which gives solvated electrons. It's actually just free electrons sitting there in the ammonia that's giving this solution its blue color. It's so cold that what with the heat capacity of ammonia, it would give you much worse cold burns than liquid nitrogen. <laughs> Trust me on that, I got some. And in this case, it's so dilute that it's about 1,000th of a gram of lithium dissolved in all of that ammonia such that the slightest exposure of this solution to our atmosphere and it would oxidize those electrons and the whole solution would go colorless. It's both delicate and deadly. Oh, and plus it's under vacuum. That's what all that bubbling's about. When I turn the tap and put it under vacuum, you can see that the liquid ammonia boils quite well. And it's also quite a nice way of mixing the solution. Now, I actually did about two experiments in the last month or so. The first was in a nuclear reactor, which, believe it or not, was the more mundane of these experiments. The far more technically challenging experiment was the X-ray experiment after it. You see, more or less, all beam time per instrument day at these big institutes works out at somewhere between ten and $30,000-ish per day. That's just a price tag someone somewhere has to pay. Now, these folks, it turns out, had about two weeks of beam time that they wanted to measure these microjets on alkali metals in liquid ammonia. That's microjets as in smaller than a human hair. It was just a slight technical fly in the ointment that they didn't know how to do it. So with the beam time looming, I kind of stepped in to help them out which really isn't a project that you can do part-time, which is why I've not been making that many videos for the last two or so months. Now, I've actually helped these boys out from time to time. In fact, we've actually just about got a paper accepted in the Journal of the American Chemical Society, which acknowledges the support of this channel by you guys, which by my reckoning makes this the third paper to do so. One in Nature Chemistry, one in Angavante Chemie, and one in JAX which to most people will mean almost nothing. But those are kind of royal cards in the chemistry journal world. And so with no obvious signs that they were going to be able to pull this out of the bag, I decided to give them a hand. Now, in this sense, I was actually little more than a, a technician on this project. <laughs> I'm sure a technician being asked to achieve the um, impossible, you know, reminds me of that old saying, you know, miracles achieved regularly. The impossible takes a little longer. Well, okay, not the impossible, but something that was so technically challenging that it really wasn't clear that it was possible until I finally managed to get something it's that running. worked. Yeah. 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 Look at that! But you want to take a picture of my picture? I'm taking a picture of your picture, yeah. You know, there are just no textbooks that will tell you how to do something like this. And there, there are two real problems. The first is that the liquid ammonia, the temperatures we were working at, is about minus 50 Celsius. And the materials that make nice taps and seals at room temperature really don't always work when they get cold. You know, O-rings, even at freezing point, can become brittle, which is what destroyed the Challenger. Similarly, materials can be attacked by the ammonia or they just contract at different rates when they get cold, meaning that good seals on taps aren't seals anymore. And believe me, liquid ammonia and leaky taps is a nightmare scenario. On top of that, liquid ammonia is really, really evil stuff. To gas, so as you get this going, you'll be able to feel, hear the gas going. And, oh, yeah, even now, uh, you get a good whiff of ammonia and it's, it's kind of like getting hit in the face. It's, um... Oh, yeah, 
That's how sharp it is. It's really sharp, but relatively short-lived. And that's just what the gas smells like. The liquid is even more potent. Now add another tier of complexity to this, that you want to dissolve alkali metals in this ammonia, such that these solutions become phenomenally air sensitive. And that the alkali metals dissolved in that ammonia will now attack almost any plastic with halogens in them. So for instance, the benchmark of inert non-reactive plastics, PTFE, is actually really reactive to these alkali metal ammonia solutions. So on the left there, you have a virgin Teflon tap, and on the right is what it looks like after merely a brief exposure to these alkali metals dissolved in liquid ammonia. And then you've got to work out a way of pushing this all through a nozzle smaller than a human hair. human hair and that is my capillary just you can see it gets down thinner than a human hair pretty bloody quick so so we decide where to cut this guy I'm gonna cut it about there Sounds good. Nice scratch. Like and broken. Super. Done. Finished. There's a bit of a stray glass in here. Look at that. Super. Done. And then finally, of course. Any flecks of dust that get into this will clog the microjet, which means you've got to figure out a way to filter this evil, blue, highly reactive solution. It's technically challenging. Then you have to run that microjet into a vacuum chamber and hit it with an X-ray beam about the size of a human hair and measure the energy of the electrons that come off it. And that the time frame for doing all of this was so short that there really wasn't time to order or test anything new. Basically, it was what I had available directly was what I had to make the kit out of. The whole thing had a, a an Apollo 13 feel to it that, yeah, this is what you've got to work with. That's what you're going to make. Okay, people, listen up. We got to find a way to make this fit into the hole for this, using nothing but that. Fortunately, my place has quite a lot of junk in it, which gave me quite a lot of versatility here. Now, sure, there are people working on this, and the, the microjet technique itself is nothing new, but not on a system like this. So practically, I had little more than a month to make something workable with a cost of failure about a third of a million dollars of somebody else's money. And yeah, so I figured that was something worth taking seriously, putting some real effort in on, which is why I haven't been around much. Now in the end, this was actually all a roaring success, but scroll the clock back a month or two, and that was far from a done deal. This is kind of a Good. So conceivably side. possible. Film it for a while. Yeah. They make it. Oh, yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. yeah no. That's at least 30 seconds and it's stable. Indeed, it wasn't even clear whether this would be possible. I mean, 30 seconds here was nothing. 30 seconds just was a proof of concept. To be useful, this thing had to be stable for about half an hour. There was a strong element of rolling the dice on this. But of course, fortune favors the bowl, and if you never try, you'll never succeed. And the fact that I've been doing stuff like this for most of my adult life was, was probably a plus. 
We're still jet ink? Yep. Ah, oh, that's good. Unfortunately, it's focusing in the wrong... Uh, it's, it's impossible. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. That's awesome. That's acceptable. Right. Done. So in the end, it all came up smelling of roses. And as you can see, the whole thing was far from a solo venture. And we came away with everything we wanted and more. I mean, that there on the screen is the energy of kicking a solvated electron out of liquid ammonia. Something that's never been measured before. Why the hell's that interesting, I hear you ask? Well, that's a long story, but it's related to this really bizarre property uh, that you get with liquid ammonia, that the electrons just sit there in solution. And because of that, I'll bet dollars to donuts that the results in this experiment will someday end up in a top shelf science journal. Again, acknowledging those who supported this channel, because the simple reality is that all the scientific equipment that I used to do this, which has actually gotten quite formidable over the years. Without that, I would have had zero, zero chance of pulling this off in the time frame. You know, the, the glass blowing kit I used to make the nozzles, the spectrometer I used to identify suitable plastics, the vacuum pumps I used to test stuff, the microscopes I used to inspect the jets, and the thermal camera I used to work out the heat flow of the kit. All of this was thanks to you guys.